outro cast. I'm going to say good morning. I assume you're a West Coaster. I am. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Access TV is my favorite channel on television. I go on record saying that because you say, what other channel gives you countdown shows such as yours with yeah. concerts, professional wrestling, MMA, documentaries, etc. So thank you for your time to say the least. Yeah. Uh, happy, happy to chat with you and everything. I'm glad that you like the network. Yeah, the top 10 revealed is one of my favorite shows. And I have so many questions about it, if it's okay to ask. <laughs> yes, ask away. Okay, the first thing- I that dare I'm you curious- to ask me something no one's asked before. <laughs> it okay, seems like well, people are curious about the same weird details, but go on. Okay, well, no, this is a basic, basic question. And that's okay. when you bring in a big name, like a Paul Stanley, like a Sebastian Bach, like an AJ McLean, somebody like that. Do they get sat down on the chair and then get asked questions for every single episode that's going to be taped? Like, hey, three hours. <laughs> okay, you- so yeah. Okay, congratulations first off, because no one's actually asked me that specific of a question. Um, and that's actually a really good question, right? Because I, I it makes me appreciate that you have watched the episodes and kind of you see that there's like a, a rhythm and ebb and flow. There's like a, a Tetris game of human beings going on. Yeah. Um, so for those of you that have never watched the Top 10 Revealed, it, I mean, the Top 10 Revealed is a typical countdown show. Every week, the topic changes. So it'll be like Top 10 Rain Songs or Top 10... Um, you know, 80s prom songs or 80s movie soundtracks, right? And so you count down these 10 things, but then we have these celebrity guests that comment. So you get to hear and see the music video of this song, but then you have, uh, you know, like AJ McLean or Sebastian Bach or Dee Snyder or Paul Stanley. My face like was like, ah! Paul Stanley yeah. um, commenting on, you know, why that song deserves to be on the list or what they like about the list. Now, to get to your question, um, for instance, this season we have 15 new episodes, which means I had about 32 guests. Oh my gosh. If you had seen my house in the pre-production days leading up to those interviews, it was like a wall of like poster boards and post-it notes and weird hand drawings of being like, well, if Paul Stanley is on this list and then this list. So I try and take a person and you know, if there's 15 episodes, they're going to be on probably four or five of the episodes. So it's me sprinkling the people so that's not, well, they can't be on four in a row. I mean, that's not fun because I want, you know, 15 episodes. I need, I need to spread out my Paul Stanley. So I try to strategically spread out my people and then you get to the 10 songs that are on the list. And so it's kind of like, I want to maybe meet all of our cast of characters in the first block. So that means in song 10, nine or eight. So I make sure that each episode has, you know, about 12 people on it. You know, you get to see all 12 of those faces, hopefully in the top of the show. So then you know what's coming up later on. So it's like this human Jenga Tetris thing that I have going on. That was actually one of my next questions you partially answered right there. If it was you doing the interviews, a lot of the interviews under the prep and the notes, not just being, hey, the pretty face doing the voiceovers and whatnot. So it is you. So, yeah, I mean, there's this huge team. So what we do with each episode is we have um, people research each song that's on the list. So, again, we had 15 episodes this season, Mm -hmm. 10 episodes you know, songs per list. So we had 150 songs. So we go in with this giant Bible of like facts on every song. And, you know, I sit someone in the chair and each person's in the chair for actually only an hour um, is all I get with each person. And so, yeah, basically it's going through and being like, okay, list number one, uh, here's your song, you know, and they talk about three or four songs. And then we kind of do some generic, you know, commentary of like, in general, you know, this is the list about rain songs. How does rain make you feel Paul Stanley? Sure. And so we get some good generic comments that get sprinkled into the episode as well. But yeah, I sit there and I, I conduct all the interviews, um, And um, then we have um, Eddie, the other producer on the show, is on headset talking through this speaker from the other room so that if a guest says, oh, remind me, remind me, who produced that song? Was that was that Mutt Lang? He like has the Bible in front of him and he's like, that was not Mutt Lang. You are incorrect. It was actually so and so blah, blah, blah. And And like he has all this information to then help the guest so that the guest doesn't say something wrong on the show, because the point of the show is it's fun. It's fast, but it's informative. And so, you know, we have fact checkers going into the show and at the end of the edit, we we fact check everything as well because we, we don't want to mislead you guys. You know, you need to have cool water cooler facts, man, and not look like a dummy. 
<laughs> to pull the curtain back 100%, you know, when I have to interview somebody about a new project, if it's somebody like Paul Stanley, the time I spoke with Paul, it's, you can ask what you want, but you primarily have to talk about his painting exhibit, his upcoming painting show. And I'm sure if you're speaking to Paul nowadays, it's like, you can ask what you want, but please talk about Soul Station the whole time. Soul Station, yes. Well, that was great is when we did have Paul Stanley in, I think yeah. one of the reasons his team did confirm him for the show is, you know, a lot, a lot of the PR people and marketing people will say, well, what are the topics? You know, what yeah. is he going to have to talk about? And one of the topics was uh, Soul Singers of the 60s. So they were like, we've got this new album. Paul's got to come in. So it was, uh, it was very serendipitous. Well, I love how many of your guests, whether or not it's intentional, harken back to the great hard rock days of the 80s and early 90s, per se. Is that you're doing? Because when I go through your social media, I see great references to Warrant, Sebastian Bach, recently taped interviews with Zach Wilde and The Darkness. But you don't quite put yourself out there as I'm the hard rock person. No, you know, it's so funny. Um, I love rock and roll. I love classic rock. I love metal. Um, you know, I like leather. So, <laughs> so you put all this together and you're kind of like, yeah. oh, that's, that's the stew that makes up me. Um, yeah. You know, when, when it came to booking the guests, the first season, I have to admit, um, for, I, I have to say originally I thought, oh, we're going to get one or two seasons out of this. Certainly I can think of 20 different lists. I mean, we're at like list number 80 something we're about to you know shoot next week for our spring season and during the spring season we're going to hit our 100th episode all right so you know i i i think i had um some self-confidence issues in the beginning thinking i'm not going to have enough lists to do this a long time and then equally, really? i thought oh who who's ever going to come on will these rock stars really return my emails because in the beginning i actually did all the booking myself so i literally sent an email dear lita ford will you come do my show? My name's Katie Darrell. And she said, yes. And I was like, oh, well, I need, I, I, I should ask some other people too. There are other rock stars that I like. Um, and then since then, the show's gotten so popular and so busy. And we, you know, are always working on next seasons that I actually now have a talent booker working with me as well. I still, I still handle my old school people. Like I still reach out to Sebastian Bach directly and Dee Snyder and the Lita Fords, but she's the one that helps me, um, hunt and stalk newcomers like Sean Stockman of um, Boys, Boys to Men, Men. Yeah. and uh, AJ McLean of the Backstreet Boys and Carney Wilson of Wilson Phillips. You know, she gets the props um, for helping me get some of these new fish in our sea. Have you tried Carney's new line of candles? I didn't know she had candles, but I know she has a, some sweets, car bites, love bites by Carney. <laughs> yes. I love it. The, the same Love Bites line, I forget what the pun is for the candles. Love Lights, I think it is. Oh, is it sold just in regular stores? Give me the details on this one. They said, mm -hmm. Darren, would you like to write about it? And I said, well, how can I write about it if I don't try it? So it comes in the mail and then you <laughs> review it in a gift guide. I mean. Oh, cool. Oh, I need to reach out to her team. I want a candle. Oh. I'll, I'll forward the info to your team to get it there. But, you know, praise goes to you with the internet interview booking per se, because some of the people that you get on there don't do a lot of interviews, don't do a lot of on camera stuff. For example, we don't see a lot of Ricky Rocket when there's not a poison tour per se. Yeah. And so, Ricky, Ricky was one of those ones that very early on, um, I did get him because poison was touring. And so, you know, I hit him at the right time and he was in town and said yes to it. And I don't want to toot my own horn, but I'm going to toot my own horn. Okay. I think I'm a, I'm a pretty laid back chick. Uh, I'm cool to hang out with. Yeah. I don't try and do a lot of like, I gotchas. Um, and my entire crew is like that as well. So once we get a guest to sit in that chair, they become a repeat guest because it is comfortable. It's a safe place. People can trust us. And I think that's a great example. With Ricky probably came in. Everyone comes in and they're like stiff for like the first five songs and then all of a sudden they're like oh i get i get what we're doing here you're not gonna be a dick to me katie oh, i trust you and then by the end i'm trying to shove them out the door because another guest is coming in i'm like okay sebastian buck you gotta leave now you you, you gotta go you could come back in three months you, you gotta go paul stanley's in the elevator <laughs> and we just create a really fun family environment um and so someone like ricky who you know doesn't do press year round for some reason, keeps coming back to me. 
well, back to you here, not the show. You got your start in radio as a teenager. Uh, like me, I'm sure you were not great when you were a teenager no. doing interviews per se, and you cringe at a lot of that early stuff when it gets yes. great for you per se. But was the eventual goal to get into TV or is that just a happy accident through meeting Team Cuban? Ha very happy accident. Um, you know, I I loved radio. I loved doing radio. I felt most confident doing radio. I enjoyed um, live, you know, just doing things that are live, you know, pre-production and post-production sucks. I hate waiting for an edit and then doing another cut. You know, I like the satisfaction of if yes. something <laughs> happens tonight at a bar, I could talk about it tomorrow morning on the radio and, and stretch out this story and stay tuned after this commercial break and really just milk a story versus being like, can you tell that in 30 seconds? seconds or less, which is the story of television. So I always thought that I would stay in radio. Um, I thought radio, uh, I, I thought TV was only for insanely beautiful human beings. And I just thought like, oh, I'm just gonna stick safe with, um, you know, radio and everything. I've got a face for radio and I've gotten my confidence. I think I'm good enough. I'm good enough looking for television now. So I'm in it now, sure. but uh, you know, I have to say like, I had these, you know, early thoughts where I was like, oh, I wish I was pretty so I could be on TV. Um, and yeah, so I just kind of, you know, it was stumbled upon television as a happy accident. Because some of the people that you have on, when we see Chris Booker on one of the episodes being interviewed, he's another one of the like radio turn TV people mm -hmm. per se. And we've seen successful ones. We've seen not successful ones. Matt Penfield, yeah. you know, successful case of that. MTV yeah. did have its years of trying to bring in radio people to on air where it did pan out. It didn't pan out per se. Right. But sometimes you hear from those people, oh, TV was the goal all along. What are you talking about? <laughs> I, I mean, it truly is. It's so funny because I actually, like you mentioned Chris Booker and I, I bring in a lot of people from like K-Rock, their world famous K-Rock um, yeah. in, in LA. And I know they're all sniffing the television industry. I know they're sniffing around, you know, they're, they're lingering, asking questions about, you know, what else is going on at the network. They like it. People have the television bug. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't, I, I was very nervous about taking that step and it just wasn't a goal. I'm happy it was a goal now. Although I, although you know what sucks? What's that? I'm doing the regimen, right? It's like radio again, and and maybe I guess so many radio shows now do so much on social media and like cameras in the studio. But yes, like it is real bogus that you know a morning like today, I'm I'm talking to you, and then I've got a couple interviews lined up after. And I had to like set aside an easy 90 minutes to be like, gotta blow dry this hair, gotta put on my clown face. And you're like, <laughs> no one takes into account, especially for women in this industry, that there's like an extra 90 minutes, not to mention the extra half hour to get the shit all off your face at the end of the day. <laughs> oh, I know what you're talking about. When it comes to scheduling interviews, a lot of the time it's like, they're not wearing makeup this day, this day, or this day. If you want to speak with them, this day is, is the one Yes. Day. I, I, I create what I call hell days um, when it's really not. I mean, I could be digging ditches, right? And th so this isn't yeah. a hell day, but it's my hell day that I'm in front of this camera. And so I'm talking to you. I've got three interviews for Access TV, not for the top 10 reveal, but for other programs. And then I've got a, a, another promotional like Zoom. And I was like, this is the day I'm showering, folks. But I'm still wearing sweatpants. <laughs> It's not just the top 10 revealed, it's the Katie Darrell secrets are revealed today. Yeah, today. exactly. So that's great to hear that there's more content coming, you know, another season of the show, you haven't hit your writer's block, desperate, like 10 more murder songs, like you haven't reached I, 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 that. Point. Okay, so there are lists, though, that sometimes I'm like, we really need to do a part two of, because sometimes, um, obviously, when we're curating and making the list, you look and you're like, there really are 20 songs that deserve to be on this list. And luckily it's, I don't get the blame. We allow um, our viewers to vote. So they're to blame if you don't like yeah. the list. But yeah, sometimes I'm like, the viewers messed up. Like these songs, like there should be other songs on this. So we have explored the idea of doing a couple like back by popular demand episodes. Um, I think we did like, or spinoffs almost like we did top 10 um, color songs, you know, so it was like Yellow Submarine and Lady in Red and things like that. But then we did a specific like black songs and like Metallica and like fade to black, um, you know, paint it black and everything. So, you know, we have some derivatives, if you will. Derivatives in a good way. Well, 
One Access TV question I have for you, and if this is a horrible question, go next question. So Do Sammy, Sammy, does Sammy Hagar go to the same hairstylist as me? Yes. No, I just... It actually was a Sammy question. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. Go for it. I love Van Halen to the point that I'm making my wife go to five David Lee Roth shows in December and January per se. It's that my question is, are we going to see any Van Halen oriented program in the near future related to top 10 revealed? Ooh, like very Van Halen specific. So no. And it, it, this is the only reason on that is we will not do an episode dedicated to one artist. We've talked about in the past, like top 10 Fleetwood Mac songs. Cause if you will like access TV, you have to like Fleetwood Mac. I think that's like, in, in oh, yeah. like you have to. Um, so yeah. And we, Oh, should there be like top 10 Van Halen songs? And um, in all the brainstorm meetings and powers that be, we've decided it will never be specific. Then again, I love to say never say never. Uh, I didn't know I'd get to 100 episodes. Come talk to me again when I'm trying to get to 200 episodes. I'd be like, yeah, we should rethink that because we're running out of ideas. But as of right now, there isn't something Van Halen specific. But the long running joke, especially during, because we're in um, season four of the top 10 reveal. Mm -hmm. I don't think there was, in seasons one, two, and three, every list either had, ACDC or Van Halen or the Rolling Stones on the list. Then maybe all didn't make it, but it was like, you could not listen to an episode without hitting one of those bands. And it just goes to show who our viewers are, who are voting. They're like, yes, Van Halen. I'm like, how many more times can we talk about, you know, hot for teacher? Apparently four times. Cause it's made four different lists. Wow. Well, but they do. Van Halen, you know, and ACDC and the Stones, they do tick a lot of those boxes, you know? So you're like, oh, summer songs, you know? So, you know, Van Halen, or you do like David uh, Lee Roth and, um, you know, his summer song. Or you do, you know, color songs and you do get to um, the Rolling Stones. I don't know. I rambled. That I, answer sucked. That answer sucked. Cut it. That answer did not suck. Uh, I thought that the answer was going to be, well, we are on Team Sammy here, so we don't know Van Halen. We only know Van Hagar in the station. Uh, no, you know, I love Sammy. And I've had a lot of opportunities to do cool things with Sammy. Yes. Um, and, and it's not that I'm Team, you know, David Lee Roth versus Sammy. I just like Sammy's original stuff. Like I'm a sure. Sammy girl. I'm like, oh, you know, him with chicken foot and just Sammy, Sammy, Sammy. And so I think of Van Halen as like, yeah, it is David Lee Roth. And there's this time that Sammy lent himself to the occasion, but Sammy is his own like standalone for me. Um, so I think that there's room for both of them at my Thanksgiving table. Thumbs up. And I interviewed Sammy's son, Andrew, last week, who's following in the family footsteps and he's great and right. Right? Oh yeah. Are oh, you yeah. kidding me? I got to taste. So Sammy has this new cocktail out his, um, his beach, um, like Cabo. Water, like, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Tasty. I liked getting that package in the mail. I was like, don't mind if I do. I mean, I have to taste this alcoholic beverage during the work day because it was sent to me as a worker bee. Yes. You're just doing the correct research. Doing my me. job. Okay. So, so to recap what we've learned again, there is more in the tank. Um, you can pretty soon start using that Gene Simmons line when he was talking about his reality show and he was saying more episodes than I Love Lucy uh, when he's talking about the family jewels. I don't know what number it is. I think that's maybe 133. Ooh. But you're pretty much there. Um, okay. Any side hustles or projects we didn't go over that we should be plugging from you, Miss Katie Darrell? You know, you should all check out my social media. Um, I try and post things differently. So it's not one of those things where I drop it and it just automatically goes to Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. There's kind of different stuff on all of them, but it's mm -hmm. all my name. So Katie Daryl, K-A-T-I-E. D-A-R-Y-L. So you should check those out. But, you know, the top 10 revealed is obviously on Access TV proper. Some of the old episodes are on our app and on our website, but there's a lot of digital content that I do for Access TV as well. Like some of these long form sit down interviews, like you mentioned with Zach Wilde or Tom DeLong of Blink82 or Nancy Wilson of Heart. So make sure you just head over to like the Access TV website or app and you'll be able to see my weekly interviews with rock stars for a series called At Home and Social. On Fridays, I do a music news show called the music high five 
Um, yeah, so I'm kind of busy doing those other things, but you can always just stalk me over at Access TV. Stalk you at Access TV. Well, whatever it is, I'm looking forward to whatever comes next from you in the near future. Keep up the great work there, Katie. Thanks so much. It was nice chatting with you. Outrocast.